I feel like I have failed. It, it's hard for me to stand up here and say that. I've spent the last two years of my life uh, searching for a big solution to a big problem. I've been trying to close the gender gap in the tech industry, and I've learned one thing, that there is no magic solution. Um, I've spent time campaigning governments and lobbying governments for policy change. I've raised money from companies. I've written a book on the subject. But what I've come to realize is we don't need one solution to revolutionize the technology industry. Big shifts are built on little changes. What we need is lots of grassroots solutions to local issues. It's about the subtle details. We really need to sweat the small stuff. We can't deny the facts. Despite an increase in awareness of the problem, I mean, even last night, I was watching the latest episode of The Good Wife, and I love that show, I love that show. But even, even that, they were talking about the lack of women in technology. So despite this increase in awareness of the problem, the number of women in computer science has gone down. In the US, the number of women in computer science has gone down by 20%, and it's currently stagnating. In the UK, it's actually even worse. In 2013, the number of women in technology was 17%, and it's gone down to 16%. So things are getting worse. So what we're doing is not working. We've seen an increase in the number of women in medicine, in law, in physical sciences, but we're yet to see an increase in the number of women in computer science. So what I want to do today is share with you three hard, really hard learned lessons. Firstly, at the heart of this decline is the perception amongst women that we don't belong. Secondly, that small interventions not big revolutions, are more effective at closing the gender gap because women notice the detail. Yes, we do. <laughs> and finally, and finally, it's up to us, you and me. We cannot, we can't, cannot wait for our governments, for our policymakers to change things. It's up to us. But what do I mean? What do I mean by small interventions? I mean the layout of our classrooms. I mean the layout of our classrooms. I mean the, um, the decoration in our cafeterias and our lobbies. The language we use in our software and our job ads. And even the literature we have in our receptions. It's unsexy stuff. It's banal, it's every day, and you're probably thinking, well, if I do that, I'm not going to get a promotion. It's the sort of things two years ago I would have said, it's completely trivial. Yet it works, because women notice the detail. There's been countless times where I've gone to a dinner party with my husband, and on the way out, I'll look at him and I'll say, did you see the way he looked at her, and he'll look at me blankly, like he does often, <laughs> unfortunately. He'll look at me blankly and go, no, you're paranoid. And I'll ask the very same question to a female friend. And she will go, hell yeah, and did you see the way he looked at her after that? Oh my god. A study at Pittsburgh University with 100 men and women found that men have better spatial and rotation ability. We kind of know that already. But women are better at remembering location and places. Sorry, location and things. And these things are really, really important because they determine who belongs in a space. So why is it? Why is it? that women feel they don't belong in the tech space. Brilliant scientist. I'm sure you've seen. He was leading the Rosetta mission this week. I'm sure you've seen this image. It's been plastered all over the internet. 
I want you to think about, just take a look at his shirt. <laughs> and it's a subtle thing, right? But what does that say to women who are thinking about a career in science? It says they don't belong here. Now, we asked hundreds of teenage girls from all around the world. This was fun. And 99% of our teenagers, what we asked them to do was draw a picture of a technologist. 99% of our girls drew men. And as you can see from the images, all of them wore glasses. Mm, all had most had unfashionable clothes. This poor guy in the corner, he's got hairy ears and looks like a <laughs> hobbit. Well, I'm not quite sure what's going on with him. Anyway, um, the perception of people that work in technology is pizza-guzzling nerds who cannot get a girlfriend. <laughs> Clearly, that doesn't apply to anyone here. And when I said to the girls, I said, how would you feel? How would you feel if you had to work with a person you'd drawn? They did not hold back. <laughs> One girl told me she'd rather be a garbage collector than work in technology. <laughs> and Lila summed it up. Lovely Lila. Lila summed it up. She said, he would be old and his hair would be overgrown because he doesn't care what he looks like. He only cares about computers. He even dreams in code. He even dreams in code. And the world of technology is alienating us with what I call the genius syndrome, that you have to be obsessed. You have to be obsessed to work in technology. You have to dream and breathe in code to be successful, despite the fact that the women who do do computer science get equal grades to those guys. The focus on appearance is also really, really important because we, as women, we are still, unfortunately, largely um, judged on how we look. So it's actually no surprise, then, we disassociate ourselves with careers that have an image problem. Now, the subtext here is, I don't belong. And I think at all, at all points in our lives, we've all felt that. I certainly have. You know, whether it be at school or at work, we found ourselves to be outsiders that we didn't really fit in. And that is how women feel when they're faced with the world of technology. It's that that we're fighting. So what small interventions can be effective in making women feel like they do belong? Okay, I want you to embrace your inner geek for a couple of minutes and think of some stereotypically geeky things. It might help thinking of the set of the IT crowd. <laughs> or I've just finished Silicon Valley, which is brilliant, but very funny, but also uh, highlights some of the issues. A study at Washington University did exactly that. They dressed two rooms differently. So in this room, they had a poster of Star Trek. They had some cans of soda and some old pizza boxes. They dressed another room, a more neutral room. They replaced the picture of Star Trek with a picture of nature and replace the uh, bottles and cans with coffee mugs and water bottles. And what they found, what they found was that women who were interviewed in this room were more likely, sorry, in this room, were more likely to be interested in computer science. Now what's super really interesting about this is that men too preferred the more neutral room. So whilst the level of geekiness didn't put them off, they actually preferred the more neutral room. And one of the things we did for a mobile operator, we were training them on empathy training. And the purpose was to increase the number, the satisfaction amongst female customers. But what happened, and we didn't expect this to happen, but what happened was we'd increase customer satisfaction amongst men too. So the things that I'm sharing with you will make, it more, will make you more effective with men too. Now, I'm not trying to feminize. <laughs> Just to be 100% clear, because I always get asked this question. I'm not trying to feminize, so don't rush out and buy loads of My Little Ponies. 
I, my daughter loves My Little Pony. But uh, don't rush out because I've been campaigning, as, as we heard earlier, that against the pink it and shrink it approach. So I'm not trying to feminize and dumb down computer science. Even a poster. Now, this sounds ridiculous, but even a poster can help women deliver a better performance. A study at um, a Swiss study with 150 participants in a virtual online classroom asked women to deliver a speech, and men too. What they found was that if they put a picture of a powerful woman up, in this case, Hillary, Hillary or Angela Merkel, the women delivered a better speech. Now, for men, it made absolutely no difference at all. <laughs> but I want you to start thinking about what are the subtle signals, what are the cues you have in your own environments that dictate to women to determine whether they belong? And are you thinking about how to, can women deliver their best performance? Maybe I should leave those up while I finish the talk. Um, another study at Waterloo University took a group of young women and um, gave them two sets of TV commercials to watch. The first lot were really stereotypical, so you've got a um, woman drooling over chocolate cake. The second lot of commercials were much more empowered, so you've got women in the adverts, they were impressing men with their automotive knowledge. And what they found was that women who watched the stereotypical commercials underperformed in the maths test. The women who watched the more empowered commercials did much better in the maths test. There is no news. It's not new news to say that the media affects our performance and perpetuates stereotypes. But what is new news is what I'm talking about is how do we rebalance the media so we can give women a bigger voice in the industry. And this comes down to the literature that you have in your receptions. Another study at the same university asked a group of women who were going for a job to read two different, um, two different articles. The first one is, study finds computer science no longer dominated by geeks. And the other one is, continues to be dominated by geeks. And the women who read that were more likely to want the job. And that is all about belonging. And the same university looked at 4,000 job ads. And what they looked at is what words really appeal to women. So some of them you would expect. So these are the words that appeal to women, and these are the words that women deem um, less appealing and more masculine. So in a job ad, you know, obviously empathic, um, there's some more obvious ones. But the word excellence, the word excellence is incredibly appealing to women. And it's not a stereotypical word. In a FTSE 100 company, they, on a job ad, they change the title from technology manager to digital manager. And they increase the number of women that apply to that job by 30%. So one little word was all it took to bring a whole group of women into technology. Now, if we want to be more successful with hiring women, if we want to be more successful at getting women to engage in our products, we've really got to focus on the small things because they dictate who belongs in that space. And the examples that I've shared with you have far-reaching consequences in every sector. And we can implement these on the smallest of measures Take my friend David Talbot. He's the head um, of computer science at Highgate Wood School. Fantastic guy. And he rearranged the desks in his computer science classroom. So from a traditional grid where everybody had their back to each other and working individually to a cluster approach like this. Imagine the headline, teacher rearranges desks. It's hardly earth shattering. But the impact was earth-shattering, because what this did do is it brought tech-phobic girls out of the shadows and into the heart of the classroom. They started interacting with each other and with technology. So we do have the power to change things. And the time is now. Let's do three things. Firstly, let's, let's put more of these words in our job ads and just see what happens. 
Whatever you're advertising, just see if you can use some of these words, and I'll publish this on Twitter, um, and let's see what happens. Secondly, get a group of women together and ask them what they notice about your product and tell them that no detail is too small. No detail. And finally, tweet me and the Lady Geek team. I want to see photos of your receptions, your cafeterias, your lobbies, your job ads, and we will give you feedback. Because when it comes to getting women into technology, size matters. <laughs> That's a different talk. That's a different talk. But small, small is where the biggest shifts are to be made. We've got to sweat the small stuff. Thank you.